Here's John with Coach Garrett. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Michael. Coach, you haven't been around long enough to know how many strange games we seem to play against that team from uh, Lewisburg. But, uh, uh, you know, an exciting game for sure. It's a heartbreaker. What do you say to your squad? Well, nobody deserves to lose like that. Um, that is a freak play. Um, and uh, we're going to be fine. Uh, we're going to be fine. Uh, we just have to uh, rally the troops, um, make the corrections we need to make, and go back to work on Tuesday. Well, John, a casual observer, obviously, uh, uh, just watching from the sideline, uh, the steps, the strides this team has made, uh, they've learned how to win. Today notwithstanding, uh, I believe there's a building block here. Well, we did some good things in the game. Uh, we need to execute better uh, in all phases. Uh, and uh, good teams, relevant teams, keep improving, and that's what we're trying to do. I like the phrase relevant teams. We will be relevant. John, good luck next week. Thank you very much. Got it. Gary, Michael, back to you guys. All right, John, thank you for, very much. We're going to call timeout, and then Mike and I will come back, look at highlights, make some final comments, and then John and Phil will close things out for you. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. It's time to take a look at the highlights of today's ball game, or in the case of a Lafayette Leopard fan, the lowlights. Here's Mike. Well, in that first half, it was a defensive struggle really all the way through the game, but the early in the game, Lafayette trying to throw the ball again, very similar to the play that ended the game. Drew Newcomb, he's going to pick that off and then cut back inside for that 7 0 lead, and you get another look at it here again. You know, we talked about it late to the outside, can't do it. That's a touchdown for Bucknell. So, 7 0. There, the Lafayette defense kind of stepped up all the way through. Lafayette got their running game going today. Gary talked about it, over 90 yards rushing. C.J. Emil here on the third down and three. And then the freshman, Selwyn Simpson. I have a feeling you're going to see more of Selwyn Simpson because he's got the bulk and the speed to do things like that. Ties the game at seven. At the end of the game, Bucknell had driven the ball all the way down. You see here Thomas, number four, gets just enough, a piece of it right there, celebrates as Lafayette goes to overtime. In overtime, didn't take long. One play, again, I talked about first play, so important. One of the first times I see him step up in the pocket, delivered late and to the outside, just not enough on it. you got to either figure that your guy's going to catch it or nobody's going to catch it, and that ball falls short into the hands of uh, Connor Genome, and he takes it 95 yards, gets hit right here, and he jumps in there for the 13-7 win. Really tough one to swallow, even up here in the booth. The good news, as we mentioned, Lafayette has the rest of the schedule in front of them, and they can still make some noise in the Patriot League if they win out. We will be back with you in three weeks, as the Georgetown game will not be on the Lafayette Sports Network. A bye week next week. Colgate looms for us, and also looming for us right now, John Leone and Phil Ng. Thanks for spending time with Mike, myself, John Bowman, doing his usual terrific job. Here's John Leone. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Michael. Well, uh, Phil, uh, uh, to take to use John Garrett's words, no one deserves to lose a game like that. It was a strange one, to be sure. The defense was outstanding. Uh, let's talk about the overtime period, uh, the brief as brief as it was. Uh, the, the play on first down, you roll the dice and, and, and you, you throw it in the end zone, hope to make a play. Well, being a receiver, you know I like the play. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I don't quite like where it went to. Uh, I think you, you had a better shot you know, going up to Matt Mrazek with his height, with his jumping ability. Um, not that there's anything against Rocco. Rocco's had a tremendous year. But then I also put 50% you know, on him, 50% on Sean. You know, it's a short ball. If it's short, Rocco's got to know he's got to go up and, and try to break that up defender. because someone's yeah. coming over. Sure, sure. Um, you know, that said, uh, there were bright spots, uh, certainly on the touchdown drive. The only offensive touchdown, by the way, of the entire uh, afternoon and evening. Um, Lafayette ended up rushing the ball uh, for just about 90 yards. Now, that might seem like a modest, terms in <laughs> uh, modest yards in relative terms, uh, but for the way this team has struggled this year, that's a bright spot, something to build on. Yeah, that's absolutely true, and I think you know the only thing that didn't go quite on script in terms of this game was the fact that we came out here in the second half and started running the ball and effectively. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully we can build on that. Um, that's going to just open it up a, a little bit more for us. Well, we heard Gary and Mike talk about this. Lafayette now goes to 2-1. and one. Uh, uh, the Patriot League race is a complete jumble at this point. Yeah. Bucknell desperately needed this game because with a with a six-game schedule, uh, you start off 0-2 and, and you're pretty much out of it. Right. Uh, there's a whole bunch of teams now uh, either at 2-1 and one or with a shot at 2-1. and one. Yeah, back in the fold, right? So, yeah, we'll see from here, you know, uh, still 2-1 and one in the league, still 
uh, can win out and, you know, see what happens with the rest of the league. And I love the optimism of John Garrett. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I needed to ask him, what do you say to your team after a game like this? Um, you know, you could sense the empathy he had for his kids. There was no uh, uh, recriminations, nothing like that. Yeah. It was just a matter of let's go in there, let's stay together, and let's go on to the next job. Absolutely. You know, a tough loss, you know, so, you know, immediate like that. Coming, you know, at halftime, uh, you know, the kids, I'm sure, were up because of the stop, the, the, the missed field goal. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, you have to come back and you have to, as a coaching staff, stress that, you know, we're still in it. And, uh, and we just move forward. Sometimes bye weeks come at good times. Sometimes they come at bad times. I, I think this is a good time for this team to kind of uh, step back, lick their wounds, and get ready uh, for what is a, a favorable favorable schedule. Uh, they're off next week. Uh, they go down to Georgetown, and then we come home for a real home stretch. Colgate here, and then the game. From filling for Gary Laubach and Mike Joseph, this is John Leone on the Lafayette Sports Network. Thank you for joining us.